Okay. I believe. Are we live now? <laughs> I don't know. I'll hold this for a second. <laughs> okay, hold on. Sorry, we're having some technical difficulties over here. But we're live, I think. Nick's just trying to get a tripod so we don't have to hold it. <laughs> laptop failed. The laptop failed. So here we go. Did you fix it? Yeah. All right. This is a big phone. This is one of the big ones. If you guys are watching, tell us who you are, where you're from. Hey guys. All right. Woo. All right. There's going to be no more shaking from now on. So we're good. We are this. good to go. All righty then. So What's this is Ask a Leader Tuesday. So whatever questions you guys have, um, send them, put them in the comments box and we will read them and try to answer as best as we can. Oh, let me actually open We'll try computer. to open the laptop. So uh, to recap, just a little bit of the technical difficulties. <laughs> um, uh, it doesn't work on Safari, the Facebook Live on the laptop. It only works on Chrome and Fernanda's password was not saved and she doesn't know her password. Anyway, we're but good. We're good. We're good. So, um, why don't we start off? Okay. okay. And then somebody asked a question earlier. So, but let's first start off by telling people who we are. Well, I'm Nick Puga. I'm Fernanda Puga. And um, I want to tell you a little bit of our story with you, Sana. And so I wrote a little bit earlier today. I hit that. What are you doing? What? No, I just wanted to see the question that we had. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So I, was, uh, I wrote a little earlier today that we are parents of two. We have a seven-year-old daughter, Olivia, a four-year-old son, Lucas. And we are originally from South America, but grew up in the States, in Miami, and most recently lived in Los Angeles for 14 plus years and uh, moved to Naples, Florida just over a year and a half ago which is where my family is. My parents are here. Um, Nick's mom and sister are in Miami. My other brother is in Miami. So all of our family is basically, not all, because your brother is still in California, but a lot of our family, most of it, is here in Florida. So we decided to move back a year and a half ago to be with them. Um, but I guess let's start from the beginning <laughs> of uh, the Usana story. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Okay. So, years ago, while we were living in Los Angeles, before we had kids, um, I had a fashion line. So I started my own fashion line, and um, I did well with press. Uh, I had celebrities wearing my clothes. I um, did not, however, do so great with sales. I started my line in 2007, 2008, the recession hit. That was pretty bad. I was selling mostly silks and silk blends. Um, so a higher price point, contemporary price point. Um, and you know, boutiques started to close down. Uh, some of my boxes were getting returned. Some people weren't weren't paying me for the boxes that they uh, had received. So there were a lot of struggles with um, my entrepreneurship journey as a fashion <laughs> designer, for sure. Um, and, but what was really great uh, that came out of it is that I actually met Krista Rialba in the fashion industry. So at the time I was marketing my line to both regular sizing and petite sizing. And so I just did a Google search and I found Krista who at the time had a blog called petitefashionista.com. And um, so we became business partners in that way where she would talk about my dresses, I would send people to her blog. And so that was really great. And we did that for probably three years or so, three to five years, something like that. And then what happened was, you know, since the times were tough with the sales and all of that, and then I became pregnant with my daughter, I decided it was better for me to stay home and, you know, take care of my daughter and just be solely focused on her. You know, being a first time mom, I didn't know what to expect. And um, so that's what I did. And what ended up happening was Krista kind of did the same thing where she had a family around the same time. So we both sort of left the fashion industry and we were just friends on Facebook. And, um, you know, eventually after my daughter was about a year and a half, I decided that I wanted to do something else again. I wanted to have some kind of a business. And that's when I kind of came across network marketing. 
as an industry and I found a company that was actually a jewelry company and since I had been in the fashion world I said oh well this is great I really love this jewelry you know let's see what happens here and so I started with that company and when I was thinking of people that might be interested in joining me in that company I thought oh well maybe Krista <laughs> and so Krista you know agreed to listen to me and um, hear me out and ask me, you know, if I would do the same for her and what she was building with her team. And I said, of course. And so um, she started telling me about USANA. And the more she told me about USANA, the more I started getting intrigued, although health was not one of the things I was that interested in at the time. Um, she kept telling me about how amazing the supplements were and I had been taking multivitamins since I was a kid. So I was like, okay, I didn't know that there was any difference between you know, nature made or whatever I was taking and USANA or anything else. So I had to be highly educated in that. Um, but she kept telling me how amazing it was and how she was building this team of really empowering women and um, just everything she was telling me was fantastic. How you would work as a team together. There wasn't really competition because, you know, um, everyone would get the same amount of points and all of that. It wasn't like a percentage of somebody's sales. So, all of that sounds really interesting and since Nick is an actor, he you know, had residual income, right? So he would shoot a commercial and that commercial would run and when that commercial would run, he would get checks in the mail. Still to this day that happens. Um, he's still shooting commercials and still getting checks for that. So, But I knew the concept of residual income from him being an actor. And so when she was telling me, and uh, Krista's husband actually was an actor as well, and so when she was telling me about that and how we could create our own residual income through USANA because it was a consumable product that people were taking every day, reordering every month, that made a lot more sense to me than jewelry, which is a one-time buy. Um, so the, for those reasons, I really, really wanted to join USANA and I brought the idea to Nick and uh, what'd you say, Nick? Mm-mm, mm-mm, uh-uh, <laughs> no, no, and oh, Absolutely, Absolutely not, <laughs> not happening. Yeah. Um, uh, especially when she was already, you know, had already started something else and now I felt like she was doing, you know, this other thing. And so I had my own reservations, uh, you know, because of that, I'm like, you know, we need to, you know, stick to something. So, but, uh, she was pretty, very confident in, in Krista, the, the business relationship that they had prior really just made her you know, just really trust Krista and and she was really a savvy business person from the get-go. And so she went ahead and did it against my uh, better judgment. And uh, I mean, eventually you said yes. Not like I just win. Well, yeah, yeah. Number, but but <laughs> initially, initially you said yes when I still wasn't really in right. agreement. Well, then, then I had to sell him on it. So Krista had to tell me about it. Then I had to tell, sell him on it and be like, well, Dr. Ross is behind it. Olympic athletes are behind it. Dr. Northrup. I'm like, come on, man. But <laughs> like, even, what else do you Even need? so, she still signed up without me <laughs> having full, he like, wasn't yes. fully, yeah. yeah. He was... Uh, and that's okay. You know, she's an independent woman. You know, we are married. <laughs> but, you know, she, she wanted to go ahead and do it. And um, it was at a unique time in my life too because I was training for a feature film and I had a lot of injuries and setbacks getting in the physical form that I wanted to be in and so when the products arrived uh, the big box with everything I and I hadn't taken anything before I didn't take supplements mm -hmm. before but um, I knew I was I was training really hard and I was just eating clean and trying to do the best that I can without you know, taking anything that would be harmful. So when the products arrived, I did say, hey, well, they're here. I might as well try them anyway um, because I've already paid for them. <laughs> uh, so I tried them and I was, that's really what uh, made me uh, believe. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Um, uh, made me believe in the part because it really, uh, I had more energy, I had better focus, um, and I was getting the results that I really wanted. So the recovery time uh, from the long hours at the gym were just shortened, and I felt a lot better. And so um, it wasn't until, so I reached this goal that I really wanted to hit, um, which was a certain percentage of body fat um, before filming, and while I was filming, 
um, it was an independent film and it's in this independent arena where I really um, like doing and I feel like I'm very you know creative more than ever it's not a gig that necessarily pays the bills it's more like you really do these independent films for the love of the film and for the experience. writing and, and the experience and all that so um, that's when the wheel started turning like hey maybe you know I could be able to focus more on projects like this if I did have this side uh, business with Fernanda and I focused on it too you know it's obviously helped me and with the long schedules that I had I had 14 hour days and I had all the energy some people got sick on set I didn't get sick um, so those are very important things as an actor you have to be healthy every single day True. and if you're sick you have to fake it luckily for me I didn't have to fake it <laughs> and I was just feeling really awesome I, I was even sharing some of the <laughs> supplements um, with oh, other yeah, people that got that. sick so um, so that's when um, you know I really you know, fully came on board so I was a, a one who tried the products first and then decided, okay, yes, I can. I'm in on this too. So we have yeah. both sides. Jeez. So I started for the business. He started for the products. So yeah. <laughs> that that's uh, really how our story came about. But it's just such an interesting thing because, I mean, you know, we were living in Los Angeles at the time. Krista is in Canada. I had actually never met Krista in person. Like even though we worked online and on the phone in the fashion industry, for years, I never met her in person until the very first convention that I went to. And I just stayed in a room with Krista and like nine other girls. It was two rooms with like 10 women. And it was like, I was, you know, expecting some petty fights or something. You know, a lot of women, sometimes it's not great. <laughs> but I mean, I was so impressed. Everyone was so sweet. Like it was, we all bonded. It was fantastic. I have the greatest memories of that. And it was actually the 20th year anniversary of USANA. And um, at the time, Nick and Andre Gordon, who is on our downline, he's our friend from high school as well. Like all three of us went to high school together. And um, the guys were like, oh, no, nah, I don't need a pep rally. I don't need to go to convention. You know, what is that about? <laughs> I was like, all right, peace. I'm going by myself. <laughs> so I went that year. They gave out iPads to everyone, like Dr. Oz spoke. It was just the greatest experience ever. And I was just FaceTiming the guys were like, hey, look what you're missing. <laughs> <laughs> and ever since, they've never missed a convention. So, I mean, that it's coming up soon, guys. Like, that is something huge. If if you haven't gone to convention you absolutely have to go it is like a life-changing experience you meet people from all over the world you see how big usana is how much dr wentz is loved and his vision and it's you know it's really fantastic and you get to tour um the actual manufacturing facility which is our corporate office and it's so impressive it's so impressive so hey k from definitely go. hi k um, so yeah, guys, I mean, if you have any questions, let us know. I'm going to read the one that Angela Gray um, sent us. She said, hey, guys, thanks for your upcoming insights. Question from my aspiring singer-songwriter, 15-year-old daughter, Sunshine. Hmm. How do you promote USANA to your colleagues in the acting slash producing business space? What would be a conversation starter and in what way do you present? So I will let Nick answer that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I... I I guess I touched on it already a little bit in my own story, um, being healthy. I think um, sometimes we, we feel like, oh, how do we talk to this professional? How do we talk to this professional? And we get stuck in that. And we shouldn't ever lose sight of how powerful it is to know the personality quadrant of the person you're talking to. So there's, um, even though someone could be an actor, there could be, yeah, four different personalities of acting and why they chose acting. So for me, um, I think part of my DNA or makeup or my vision when I was, you know, gonna be, you know, wanted to do acting, I saw this long-term thing where I would be able to, uh, you know, have a big career and a big career enough to be able to make a difference and start in charity and give back in some way. And so USANA was the first time I ever realized like, oh, I don't necessarily need to have a bunch of fame to make a difference. Mm -hmm. I think uh, that was huge for me and to be able to help other people. Um, and so 
So for someone who's in that quadrant who really likes to help people, um, there's so many things that the, there's the Children's Hunger Fund. Uh, many times when we were in California, we actually uh, packaged, uh, you know, food and stuff. And this mm -hmm. is stuff that I, I probably could have done. And I, I guess I didn't even really realize USANA definitely opened my eyes to say, hey, well, you know, you could be doing this right now. Like, well, you know, what difference um, does it make? And so um, that actually has helped me tremendously. Um, I think the personal growth, I think a lot of, sometimes a lot of actors or artists, you said she's a singer? Is she's that what a she's singer saying? songwriter, yeah. She's a singer songwriter. So, um, you know, you have to rehearse and you have to practice a lot. Um, I don't know, just from the acting side, uh, sometimes actors get really into class and they're only focused on class and their only friends or other actors in those classes. And so there's this uh, very limited, um, you know, vision and you kind of lose sight of who you are as a person and um, for auditions and presenting yourself to producers you know music producers or whatnot I think you really want to become the best version of yourself and I would say the personal development that I was exposed to within the conventions within other leaders telling me different books to read different audios to hear um, that all all of that stuff has made me an absolute better auditioner because I'm a better person when I walk in the room and that at the end of the day is what you're selling as an artist you're selling yourself and what you're capable of doing for that um, production um, so it really just depends on their need I think that never changes you really have to hear people out and see what their need is. If they're a struggling artist and they're waiting tables and they're bartending till 2 a.m. and they have an audition at 10 a.m., odds are they're not gonna give a quality performance at that audition. So being able to leverage how they can, you know, have more time, not necessarily have to bartend till two in the morning, these ideas and along with the personal growth, um, it's just, it, it, there's so many different things. It really depends on who you're talking to and what their need is. So I would um, absolutely listen and ask as many questions as you can and you'll be surprised at how many things that USANA can do for that person. Yeah, I mean, I think... Um, the some... products alone too, staying healthy. And, yeah. you know, the energy, the, you know, some... People want to lose a certain amount of weight. Some people, um, you know, can't get sick because they're, you know, their performance is going to be bad. So yeah, just I think so especially ways. for singers, don't you think? I mean, for you know the, the sore throats and all. The, mm -hmm. Man, before you saw I would get sore throats all the time. Yeah, I'm not a singer, but <laughs> and and it's definitely opened us up as well. I think um, from a networking aspect. Yeah. So these are skills that are needed in life in yeah. all different arenas all different professions networking is huge and i think that was probably my weakest um oh absolutely so we, we we used to go to parties <laughs> and we joked that like we used to go to parties in la all the time what's up from cooper city hey cooper city cooper that's city. close hi mark um so we used to go to parties all the time and literally just talk to each other and then leave. And like, <laughs> what was the point of that? Yeah. But we were both introverts. So um, even though he's an actor, he's still really like intro introverted normally. So this, this being a part of this business and just making friends with people from all over the world and learning all these communication skills and how to talk to people and ask questions and listen, all this stuff has opened us up to a, a new world of, wow, I mean, such a bigger network, so many more friends. Like, it's so much easier now that we just moved to Naples um, a year and a half ago. Probably before Yusana, it would have taken me four years to make the amount of friends I've made in, an, in a year, yeah. <laughs> something yeah. like that. I wouldn't talk to anybody. But now, like, I talk to all the moms at the preschool, you know, whoever, if I, if I have someone, I see someone that has a positive vibe, I'll just go talk to them and, mm -hmm. you know, say what's up, ask questions, are they from here? All of that, I mean, is so um, beneficial, just like he says, for, for life. So I think also, uh, you know, some of the things I'm trying to, I'm trying to really, uh, really answer this question because this is our one question and anyway. Any other questions, uh, guys? This is the one question we have so far. Um, but that, 
I think um, some of the things I uh, I leveraged on is uh, as far as like making a difference. I, I think like the big actors and depending on who you, the big big actors were like the 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 Leonardo DiCaprios and the Angelina Jolie's that are on this huge level. I think it's important to note that they are on a certain level they are leaders and so this is kind of like a leadership sure. course that you kind of go, go into and they, they're they like global leaders they're really trying to make a difference in this world in so many different ways they're not just you know movie stars so some are just that so it's really about opening their their um, their eyes to everything else uh, and, and just giving them a much bigger picture than just, you know, someone who, I don't know. They, there, there are different, it, it just depends on who you talk to. Because some actors just want to be famous and just want to be interviewed. And then some people, you know, really are destined to do great things and become a leader in this world. And, you know, those are the, so if you aspire to that, um, then this is definitely a great way to, you know, Flex these skills. muscles, build your self-esteem in that arena, and really kind of learn, um, you know, learn more about yourself and become the best version of yourself. Okay. So does anyone else have a question? Did we answer her question fully? It says, what would be a conversation starter and in what way do you present? Conversation starters. Conversations or starters are always questions. Um, so um, there's this old... You know, form technique, the acronym form. Uh, you ask questions about their friends, the family, occupation, uh, rec recreation, what they like to do for fun, and then then you give your message to that mm -hmm. person. So it's always about conversation starters are always asking questions. It's about being Finding interested, not right. interesting. Interesting right. is interested. So. Um, and becoming a better listener, actually, yeah, that's what become, makes you a better actor, too. Uh, it's acting is, for the most part, is just reacting and how you react. Okay, how do you create conversation with the person at the supermarket checkout? Ooh, that's such a short window of time. <laughs> Topics, any topic, I think, um, ask a leader, it seems to just be a free day, so... <laughs> um, so how do you create conversation with the person at the supermarket checkout? That's a good one. I mean, I definitely have. It depends. Like someone in line, or are you speaking of someone, uh, the, uh, the cashier? Oh, yeah. I was thinking of cashier, but I don't know which one he's asking. I've done, I, I feel like I've done, I've done both. both. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll answer one of them. <laughs> um, well, always just asking questions. My, my first question to anyone is, is um, are you from here? That's, that's how I usually get conversations started because. Um, oh, the cashier. Yeah. Just because. Um, then I, I just have a you know a place to go. It just kind of flows from there. Just are you from here? Oh no, I'm not from here. I'm from Jersey. Oh, what brought you here? You know, just kind of things like that. Um, that's how I always get the conversation started. But for for the cashier, so I think it's difficult to. Um, I mean, if it's somewhere you you frequent often, then it's okay to you know they have a name tag, so you call them by their first name. People's names are the sweetest sound to anybody. <laughs> so um, knowing their name and you know and you know and saying you know thank you for helping me, Sarah, or you know just starting a conversation. Sometimes they mention something like, "Oh, I've been seeing a lot of people buying these things. Are they good?" You know, and sometimes they start the conversation like, "Yeah, they're really good," and you can expound on that. You can ask them, um, you know, different different questions, but and you can start to build a rapport if you frequent there often, but. The odds of just going to a supermarket once at a cashier and getting I mean, that person's information is I definitely have not done impossible. It I've done it. I've oh, done, it done it. So why don't you answer the question? <laughs> I haven't. I have done it before. Usually I, I I compliment them. Like, you know, I I won't talk to a cashier unless I really genuinely or, or anyone really unless I, I genuinely think that they're very positive and nice and that I have a good experience with them, first of all. So I'm not going to just talk to someone who is... I just don't get a great vibe from. But if I have an awesome cashier that I feel like, oh my gosh, this girl is, you know, or guy is doing a great job and um, they're just really nice, I compliment them. I'm like, oh, you've given me such great service. Thank you so much. You can do the, are you open to other streams of income? That's something um, that you could ask. 
or you could ask, you know, um, is this, you know, do you, do you work anywhere else? Is, you know, is this a job or a career for you? What would you, what are you interested in? Um, you know, what are your other interests? Or um, you could say, you know, if I shared something with you, would you take a look? Um, you could give them a business card. You could give them the little, um, what is it called? The, the customer, mm -hmm. the product booklet, product mm -hmm. brochure. So I have the little, the little mini product brochures. I have my business card stapled on that. So I can give them that or um, send them a video. So it depends uh, if they're open to giving me their phone number or not. <laughs> so if they are, then I will take that or Instagram or Facebook, um, you know, and then uh, message them with a video or, so, or something. Or the yeah. thisisusana.com is great as well to send. Yeah, so um, a, an example would be like, hey, you've been giving me great service. I don't know if you're open to other streams of income. You're obviously you know, really good at this. Like if I uh, sent you a video, that, you know, that goes a little over the company that I, what I do, would you take a look? So if I would you, um, yeah. would be. I love the if I would you, that's the best. Yeah. And always ask a question. Even when you're talking to people on, um, that's something I've learned is always ask a question. Open-ended questions, yeah. And never apologize. Those are the those are some of the two things that I've learned in the past couple of years. Is like sometimes when you apologize to someone, like you haven't written somebody back in three days or something, and you you know give them an explanation as to why. Like you don't even need to do that because anything you say is going to sound like an excuse anyway. So just start from whatever they, whatever you want to say. You don't need to say, "Oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't get back to you because of this and that and the other thing." Most people don't care or they think it's an excuse anyway, so just skip that. Um, and what was the other thing that I said before that? Oh, always end in a question. So even when you're just messaging someone on Facebook, on Instagram, all on email, always end in a question so that you have a conversation that keeps going. Mm -hmm. In person. Too. Yeah. Always ask questions. You're welcome. Anything else? All right, so well, um, curious, and sometimes when I struggled with this, and I was still learning uh, some of this, um, I heard from who else was I listening to back then? Um, I think from Artemis. She said, "You know, become like this. You what, what you can think of yourself like this private investigator of people uh, and what they do and why they do what they do." Um, I think when you really create a genuine curiosity as to what that person does every day and why they do it, why they choose that, I think uh, you'll find out some really some some truths, some answers, and people will. Um, if you're interested in them, they will. You know, a lot of people will downplay whatever kind of success that they have. So whether you're talking to a really successful people, a successful person who wants to add another stream of income or someone who doesn't even know that that's even possible, um, just being interested in asking questions are always gonna um, you know, spark different things and they're gonna relay the things that are not going well. So people that are very successful, some t a lot of times are very unfulfilled. So a way of, of giving back or, you know, can really fulfill a person. This is a very rewarding business. Um, sometimes it can be, you know, it's a tough business too. It's not super easy. Sometimes it, there is work involved is what I'm saying, but it can be very, very rewarding. And sometimes that's some of the things that are lacking in some people that see success in other professions. Very true. Hello, Ang Agneta? Agneta? Agneta. Agneta. Thank you. Hi. Um, so let's see. A couple things that I just wanted to touch on. Um, if anyone else has questions, let us know. We'll also let us keep... know where you're tuning in from, and if you're replaying this, uh, hashtag replay. And any questions that pop up now or on the replay, we will answer them as well. Yeah. So we're gonna keep the thread open until 8 p.m. Mountain Time today, and we'll be um, answering questions on there if you guys have questions. Um, Two things that I wanted to just touch on real quick that I think are really great upgrades and things that Yasana have done in the last year uh, or so has been one is, you know, a lot of times we have the, the 100 point to 200 point 
personal auto order um, that we're that we need to fulfill every month and I think one great thing that they did is that they have allowed us to have preferred customers be part of that so a lot of people you know that can't afford their full auto order they can you know of course split it between family and friends as well but now you can also put a preferred customer into your business, your business center one, and have that go to your personal as well. So I think that is huge that has uh, happened. Um, oh, from Seattle, Washington, awesome, cool. I love where everybody's coming from. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, I, I mentioned uh, earlier that I am a Tel Aviv ambassador and I am loving the Tel Aviv bonus. I hope you guys are loving it too. Um, I've really, been doing well with Cell Aviv and we have had Cell Aviv parties. Um, we did another video uh, in the associate group about our Cell Aviv parties that we've had where instead of a um, full on experience where people, you know, take off their makeup and do the whole line um, and facials, we just have an experience um, uh, where we called it a happy hour um, where people would just come and I would give a little talk and pass around the products and people would just try them on their their hands and they would just feel them that way smell them that way and that was sort of enough because if you think about it when you go to you know a Nordstrom or Sephora or wherever that you go um, you don't normally take off all your makeup and try on the whole thing you just you know maybe open the bottle and have a little try of the tester on your hand, right? So it's the same kind of experience that they're used to, and it's much less work, uh, much less cleanup, um, and I think pr practically the same uh, results, and, so. And, and much less um, uh, information that you give to someone on um, that one time, as opposed to the prior presentations that we did. And I will say that I know that there, there's a lot of other people with their businesses, they will, um, just move everything to online only and do Zoom calls. I think there's definitely value in that. But I would say that um, there still is value of people getting together. And I know maybe you, it's maybe difficult to commit and get a hotel room booked, uh, a hotel ballroom booked with a bunch of people. But, you know, just 10 people or, you know, seven people, 12 people, um, getting them house. together uh, at a house or a clubhouse, um, or, something or, like a clubhouse that. or something is, it, there is value in that. And I feel people do want that, like that connection. So within your neighborhood, if you had something where, you know, people can come by for some appetizers and get to know each other and it's not super formal, that's the way we've, that's the approach we've done. Uh, Fernanda has been very, very successful with the salary bonus. So, um, yeah, I love that Celebi bonus. I think it's great. It's a great way to get, you know, upfront cash. Uh, so, uh, that is, that is really awesome. Um, and that way you show that you care as well. Yes. Have I done a mask party yet? I have not done a mask party yet. Um, I've just used the masks myself and I think the masks are a great gift as well or a great giveaway. So if you do have a Cell Aviv party and you do, you know, want to give that as a giveaway um, for people that sign up on your, your email list or, you know, raffle it off or something like that, I think would be great. Um, I wonder how a mask, I have not done a mask party. I, I'm kind of curious as to what that would look I, like I, just I, because yeah. you sort of have to sit with it on. It, the mask doesn't really stay if you're standing, so you kind of have to lean back. Like, I actually like doing the mask laying down and taking a break because it's very rare as a mom that I do that. <laughs> so it's like a good 20 minutes of self-love, um, just, just taking a nap, like not a nap, but, you know, kind of meditating um, for 20 minutes. That's how I like to do it. <laughs> but um, that's a good way to actually if you do a mask get, party i want to see it should I, take some pictures <laughs> you know, like, like Fernanda said like people don't uh necessarily want to take off all their makeup and 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 get into that and some people maybe they do but uh we found a lot of success with people just wanting to smell touch and feel this product and that's just enough um just as if they were at the supermarket or they were at the mall um, they're, you know, it's not overbearing of information. They're just trusting you because you invited to their house and you've been able to share your story, not necessarily, um, an in, 
a really overwhelming amount of information, just enough information of why there's difference. Um, and I think the overall gist of it, of what Fernanda has been able to relay as far as information is, you know, sometimes there's, there's products that are harsh. There's products that are harsh. There's products that have, uh, yeah, there's products that are gonna work because they have harsh chemicals. So it's like, yeah, you're gonna throw something harsh on your face. Okay, you're gonna see some, you know, physical results. But what, you know, it's not giving your body, you know, vitamins like ours do. It's, you know, it could potentially be harming your skin. So there are some products that, you know, could work, but what else are they doing? And then there are some products that are ultra, ultra clean, but then are they really having any effects, um, you know, on your skin? Is there any anti-aging? Is there anything that, you know, women are looking for when they're paying for skincare? Um, so I think that's sort of the difference that we have is that we have the best of science and the best of nature and, um, you know, clean products that actually work, that actually have anti-aging processes that have patented you know, process. So um, I think that's really a great difference. And you know, as you were mentioning this mask party, I just came up with a great idea that I think I'm going to try. Bam! You Let's try. hear it. <laughs> ba -ba Bam! I think it's a great idea. Anyway, so um, since the masks are, are pretty inexpensive, you know, it's three, so there's seven dollars each, right? So uh, for a pack of three, 21. So I would get, this is what I'm going to do, and let's see if you guys do it too. So I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to buy some masks. And I'll open the packages and I'll send them out. And I will invite people to a either a Zoom call or a Facebook party to do like an online party. Because I was think I was trying. This is something I've been trying to do is do an online Cell Aviv party, but I'm trying to figure out a way to do it because people can't touch it, they can't smell it. But now with the mask, maybe I can send people the mask. All the people that that you know agree to attend this party, I can send them a mask in the mail have them do it and then you know tell them okay 30 minutes before our call everyone do the mask and then we'll all get on and then i'll talk about the products and then we'll talk about their experience and have like a little online community that's how it's done folks you know that's how you it's gotta done. get creative guys <laughs> gotta get creative if you do that let me know i'm gonna do it too um anything else um any other questions any other questions ah see yeah thanks <laughs> I like that. Just came to me, so. By the way, All when right. we did our Cell Aviv um, launch, I, I think it's important to note that we did have a table with the supplements out there. We didn't yes, just uh, ignore all the other product lines. Yeah. Sometimes people came, got no Cell Aviv, and actually bought some of the supplements. Mm -hmm. So don't Why lose sight of the whole product line just because you're doing a Cell Aviv experience. Have them out there. Fernanda kind of introduces the company that it was really a supplement line first and talks about intelligence and then how intelligence is now in the skincare. So telling that whole timeline with it is a great way to introduce that there is the other line. And then I was also making Nutrimeal and I was handing out some rev right. samples too. So um, to kind of, you know, just little tiny little cups so that they get a, another, just a taste. They don't need a full shake, they just need a little sample. Yep. And um, I like the point that I think it was Lori Truman made, um, has made several times, is that USANA could really be four companies. Like our products are so good, and we have such great product lines. Like we could be a, just a, a supplement company, we could be just a skincare company, we could be just a food line company, we could be just an energy company, and we would do great. Like every line is so fantastic. So really like I think um, and also what what Tammy mentioned yesterday about you know this being a franchising opportunity I think is huge too for someone like me who you know had my own line who went through the struggles of having my own line and making all the products myself and doing all the marketing myself and doing the selling myself and mm -hmm. I mean, it's stressful. There's a lot. There's a lot of money that goes into it. There's a lot of time that goes into it. It's like you live and breathe your business. And this is something that people can start and do with a couple hours a week and have the same exact you know, benefits as a franchising opportunity. I think that's huge. And sometimes we lose sight of that because it is such a low startup cost 
You know, sometimes people don't put in as much effort as they would if they would have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, so I think we have to keep that in mind and share that as well, that it really is a franchise opportunity that we're having and that we're partnering up with a company that's been around for 26 years, has never had a recall in 26 years. I don't know if there's another company that can say that. Um, partnered with Dr. Oz, partnered with Olympic athletes, partnered, I mean, it's just incredible. Like, I'm, I'm sure you guys all know, and if you don't, <laughs> go listen to Tim, he's training from yesterday. It's just, it's an amazing company and amazing people. And seriously, if you go to convention, and I hope you all go to convention, you will meet the most incredible people and have the greatest friendships. And you know, I really, really encourage you guys to do that as well. Yes, I remember going to convention and one of the first time I went to convention and I started asking random people when I was on trams and buses or just when I was like around people, I would just ask people like, oh, you know, you know, what's your favorite thing? And this one gentleman said something really interesting. He said, the, one of the most difficult things to do in your is to get over how nice everyone is. <laughs> it is, it's almost like you're in a different world. You're like, where, well, where has this every, been? What? It's like Pleasantville here. <laughs> it's Pleasantville. What is going <laughs> everyone is so nice and so willing to help. And this group is such a great, you know, way to, to see that there's all leaders from all different teams throughout the company yeah. i mean all coming together so um yeah we've been on for a long yeah. time our we're introverted gonna... selves have talked <laughs> for 48 minutes guys so yeah. i think we're good we're, um, gonna, we're gonna leave it there and then uh feel free we'll have the uh, questions um keep rolling them out and we'll answer them as best you can hope you guys got a lot of value from this today and if not, uh, hopefully we can answer more questions uh, throughout until yeah, 8. Yeah, until 8 p.m. Mountain Time. Okay. All right. Bye, Bye. guys.